welcome to the World History Quarter 2 training. I will be your presenter, Cicely Sigu Williams. I am the Social Studies High School Instructional Coordinator. Um, just a little bit information tad bit about myself. I'm um, a little bit under 15 years of educational experience, um, both high school and middle school. Um, and I've taught a variety of subjects for social studies on the high school side, as well as the middle school side. I'm so excited to be a part of this presentation, and I uh, hope you are excited as well to be in for a treat. Before we dive into our training for today, our quarter two content training for world history for today, um, I'd like for you to take a few seconds to access the participant guide by typing in this bit.ly. During our time together today, we will focus on using 2022 fall ACP data to inform our instruction, as well as to ensure that we are spiraling content throughout the course of uh, world history and we will also take a little sneak peek at some of the instructional implications. I will remind you when we will reference the uh, participant guide. Okay, let's meet our small but mighty social studies team. Starting with our director, Shalon Bond, Miss Mary Athena Newton, our elementary coordinator, as well as Irene Lyons and Shirley Steele, who's our middle school coordinator. Myself, who's the high school coordinator, Cicely Sigu Williams, and our amazing project manager, Graham Stevens. Please feel free to contact our department if you have any questions or need any type of assistance or support. In addition to our social studies department team, we also have our social studies instructional league coaches. Um, those coaches include Sabrina Green with Region 1, Bilal with Region 4, James Hutchinson with Region 2. Their uh, contact information is also provided on this slide. Before we start our session, let's discuss a few of the norms and community agreements. Take care of yourself. Please feel free to pause this video at any given time if you need. Be fully present, be vulnerable, be mindful of other learners, and always assume positive intent. In case you missed the participant guide, here's another opportunity to access the World History Participant Guide. Here is our specific agenda focuses. We will first start with why data. Then we will go into spiraling to mastery. And last but not least, covering some of the instructional implications and resources provided by the district that you have available. Please don't forget our three district core values as we are out there in the field doing the great things with our students. And that is effective instruction, equitable access and outcome, and making sure that we always commit to continual pursuing of excellence. Here is our social studies department philosophy. You should have seen it in back to school. You should have received a handout with this philosophy as well. I want you to pause the video and I just want you to kind of reflect for about a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds, and think about what are some ways you have incorporated or embedded the social studies philosophy in your classroom or campuses? Maybe you have started in quarter one. Maybe you are projecting to bring this philosophy to life in your classroom in a quarter two. What are some things that you're possibly going to be doing or have done? In addition to the social studies department philosophy, we also have our vision and mission statement. All Dallas ISD students think critically, engage civically, and connect globally. And then our mission, providing intentional support and growth opportunities in social studies. As you clearly can see, the vision and mission statement is closely aligned to our social studies department philosophy.
Let me take a few seconds and pause for a public, a public announcement. We are defining our tiered resources in the following ways. Tiered one resources are scientifically researched and evidence-based to provide standard aligned or grade level instruction. Our tier two resources are recommended to provide targeted skills support for small groups of students who are unsuccessful with tier one instruction. And our tier three resources support highly targeted intensive interventions and instruction. These resources are intended for students performing significantly below grade level, typically around 5% of the student population. Additionally, supplemental dig digital tools are available to en enhance your instruction. Here are those resources provided by the Social Studies Department. Also, you can access these uh, icons in Clever. For elementary tier one instruction, we have Studies Weekly. For high school and middle school, HMH. Specifically for world history, HMH is going to be our tier one instruction. And for government, we have McGraw-Hill. For your tier two and tier three instruction, we have the purchased active classroom resource. We also have discovery education available for you. Now that we have gone over the curriculum tier one and tier two resources, and I know I kind of went over it real quickly. If you would like to dive deeper into that, it is also on your participant guide. You have links attached to it so that you can access more information about that. So now let's talk about what are we going to be doing throughout this session for today, starting with the learning objective. I am using historical fall ACP data to influence instructional practices for spiraling content and reviewing materials that will increase student mastery. The success criteria for this session today is, first one, I can apply historical fall ACP data to influence instructional practices for spiraling content. I can spiral and connect standards introduced in quarter one and quarter two standards. I can implement instructional practices and materials that will increase student mastery. Before we focus on learn on the learning objectives, let's talk about engagement strategies from elevation that facilitates good noises in the classroom. Also, if you would take a few minutes to reference your participant guide, you will see a copy of this flyer. Beginning with quarter two, strategies for students' engagement should be implemented to intentionally support all students, especially our emergent bilinguals and SPED. If you access in your participant guide this pamphlet, you'll see at the bottom, there are four engagement strategies we are asking you guys to use in preparation of quarter two lessons. We will actually act out in role play um, one of those strategies in a few. So we're gonna actually participate in a, in a elevation strategy known as QSSA, question, signal, stem, share, access. I will not show the video. However, you do have access to the video during your own time. If you like to pause, you have access to this and you can actually look. take a few seconds to look at this video. So instead of showing this video, we are going to actually um, go over it specific to social studies since this video is specific to math. Our ask is to strengthen the usage of all four strategies using during quarter two. You will see them on the focus IPCs as the preferred engagement strategy. Mm -hmm. Here's the example we will do. Here's the question. Do you use data 
to drive your instruction. If you do use data to drive your instruction, great, good. You know, you have to have that roadmap to show you the direction that you are going. If you are not, we are definitely encouraging you to do so. Um, and I will definitely establish a reason why in just a few seconds. So let's review the fall 2022 semester ACP data for regular and pre-AP world history. Right now, what we have in front of us is the on-level world history fall 2022 district data. As you examine the district data for the fall 2022 ACP for on-level world history, what are the three lowest SEs you see from this chart? By the way, this chart is also available to you in your participant guide. What you should have seen is that 3A is at 18%, and this is the performance on the district level. 15B is at 26%, and 22B is at 29%. Now let's look at how are the students doing? Different group now, pre-AP, our district world history PAP, pre-AP students and how they are performing on the fall 2022 world history honors exam. I would like for you to continue to look at 3.8, 15.B and 22. B. What are some possible conclusions that can be drawn from this data in relations to regular world history and pre-AP world history? As we clearly can see, pre-AP seems to be performing at a higher rate in those three specific areas than the regular on-level students are performing. But once again, this is just giving us numbers. So let's kind of dig a little bit deeper and let's see some actual ways these SEs possibly have been assessed to see possibly what may be some um, concerns are room for improvement. We're gonna look at the SEs and we're gonna look at some example items created by, pro, provided by the district for you guys. Starting with WH 3.3A, in this SE, students are to describe the major political, religious, ph philosophical, and cultural influences of these variety of classical empires. It's pretty broad, pretty intense. So questions can be a variety, but we're gonna actually like look at this one example. I will model my expectation for looking at the next two questions. So this is gonna be the first model. Also, these questions are also on your participant deck. As you clearly can see in this question, this question specifically focuses on the influences of Greece. How did I make the connection Greece? Well, we have creation of democracy. So if students had the knowledge and understanding of creation of democracy created, by Greece, ancient Athens to be exact. We have the Greek literature, the Odyssey. Here it doesn't go into great detail of the Greek philosophers, but if we remember, our students remember, we taught Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, students should be able to make the connection. So in order 
for students to have mastered this question, they needed to know these major cultural, political, and religious philosophical influences placed on ancient Greece, classical Greece. In addition, students need to know the skill of how to analyze a secondary source. All right, class, group, teacher leaders, it is going to be now your turn. In this question, WH 15B, students are being asked to analyze human and physical geographic factors. Please take a minute, refer to your participant guide. This is going to be the second question on your participant guide. Also notice, this is a spiraling SE. So this is an SE that is going to be taught throughout the entire course of world history. So it starts as early as the development of river val valley civilizations, and then it ends with the Panama and Suez Canal. For this section, you are going to identify possible misconceptions. Because you are working and you are able to pace this at your own time and at your own pace, you may be able to go on ahead and answer all three questions in relation to this specific question. As we look at this question, our focus is to identify possible misconceptions. This question is about development of early River Valley civilizations. It says the development of forming. The only correct answer here that leads to human and physical geographic factors for early River Valley civilizations would be the development of the irrigation systems. What are some possible misconceptions students may have Students may not understand the difference between human and physical geographic factors. Your human geographic factors are going to be any type of adaptation to land or modification to land. Your physical is going to be mountains, rivers, deserts. What are some ways that we can bring this development of irrigation systems to life in our classroom? We can provide visuals of the Egyptians and how they developed man-made irrigation systems, or we can even do some of modern, a picture of modern day irrigation systems, which would be those sprinklers. They're man-made products. That's human modification to geography. Here's our last and final question let's focus on, which is WH22B. And hopefully we've seen a connection with this one, referring to major religious and philosophical traditions, as well as WH3A, which goes into the influence of major religious and philosophical ideas. Here we're focusing specifically in this essay on the historical origins, central ideas, and the spreading of these religions. And then as you can clearly see, the underlying religions and philosophical traditions are a focus. This question, and this time teachers, I am asking you guys to look at possible teacher actions to address the misconception. This question clearly focuses on Buddhism and Christianity. What do they have in common? The correct answer, religion spread along trade routes, founded by man. What are some teacher action steps to address these misconceptions? After having your students analyze key characteristics of the major world religions, which there is an activity provided by the district uh, that does this, you may have your students categorize or even might even complete a Venn diagram on singularities and differences of Christianity and Buddhism. I want you to also think about some other ways that you think you could possibly bring some teacher actions to address 
common misconceptions for this possible answer and this question. FYI, I do wanna pause for a second. I wanna point out this is a technically enhanced item. Uh, the ACP will have technically enhanced items. You will have, this is considered a uh, multi-select. You will also have hotspots, drag and drops, multi-part, hot text. There will not be any, I'm gonna repeat it, there will not be any short constructive response questions on the ACP this year. However, it is good practice to practice those SCRs in your class. All right, now, we should all be able to apply historical fall ACP data to influence instructional practices for spiraling content. If you need to take a brief break, five minute, 10 minute break, definitely do so. Now that we have looked at how it's been assessed, we've looked at the why, we've looked at the data, and we've seen the historical past so that we can break those trends, let's now go into ways to spiral content. World history is so broad. It's so much information. Let's dive into some possible ways. The district has TICA line questions that are offered and provided, which embed and include questions that are often spiraled as well as DOLs. Another way that you can do in the moment in the classroom uh, spiraling is through stopping and asking questions, your checks for understanding, using those engagement strategies just to go on ahead and check and make sure students are making connections along the way. Before we dive into specific content that spirals, here's a quick recap. These are the following topics that should have been taught during quarter one. And in quarter two, we should be continuing with classical civilizations, specifically in the East, post-classical, which also includes the Middle Ages and those post-classical trades and trade routes. The impact of that trade route is where we should leave off. All right, I wanna take a second and pause and say, once again, refer to your participant guide. You have access to this same exact charts. What I'd like for you to do is, with this chart, is I'd like you to examine quarter one content, quarter two content. If you think there's more that you need to add to it, feel free. This is your chart. This is your teacher notes. Add to the content if you need. But I'd like for you to take a few minutes to pause this video and draw arrows and make connections where are some of the opportunities for you to spiral within quarter one and across from quarter one to quarter two? For example, the Neolithic revolution in quarter one leads to the early River Valley civilizations. So that is a spiral, an opportunity where you stress the development of agriculture in the Neolithic revolution leads to the early River Valley civilizations. Pause the video of about, give yourself five minutes to think about some other ways that you can spiral. You can insert arrows, you can insert um, different things along the way on your participant guide. All right. I'm going to carry on and continue. Once again, pause the video so that you can have opportunity to do this. Here is some of the examples the district has provided. Uh, the, like I said earlier, the Neolithic um, revolution spirals into the early River Valley civilizations and leads to that. The major world religions and philosophies are embedded in the classical eras. And then in quarter two, 
these early river valley civilizations, these major world religions spiral into the Eastern classical eras. And then within quarter two, you will see that both the classical eras and the major world religions are also connected to the post-classical era. So what we're seeing and what you should see is a constant cause and effect throughout the world history course. There are a lot of uh, connections that can be made. I would love to hear you guys' connections as well. So if you would like to reach out, uh, also provide information in the feedback form to share out, I would really appreciate that. In addition to spiraling to mastery, our first point, use the knowledge and skill statement, the TEKS and the TEKS spec, spec, to prioritize content to ensure an effective first-time delivery of tier one instruction. Second point, we do not teach to mastery, we are spiraling to mastery. So you must constantly spiral. And then third point, Stick to the story. Tell the stories. Have the students tell you the stories using 4QM. What happened? What were they thinking? Why then and there? And what do we think about that? When you spiral to mastery versus teaching to mastery, the first time you bring up a topic, new topic to a topic student has no knowledge of. Typically, originally that first time, possibly, maybe, students retain it that first day, let's say 100%. But as time continues, it drops. Let's say a few days drop. It drops to 50%. Why? Life happens. Kids are going through different things. They're learning a lot of course, different topics from different courses. Every day there's a new topic. So what happens to that retention rate? It decreases. However, one to two days after initial lessons, they can increase to up close to between 60 to 70% if they are continuously seeing this information. So if they see it only once, then they will not continue to have that knowledge and understanding of longevity. If they see it twice, they may have a little bit increasing of uh, retention. Third time, the fourth, the fifth, um, as much as you can spiral. Think of it like that really, really bad song that keeps on playing in your head and you don't want to sing it. You don't like it. However, it continuously keeps playing on the radio and now you're singing that song. Think about that when you are considering these things. So you would like to review and spiral to mastery. This concludes our second agenda item. And you should be able to spiral and connect standards introduced in quarter one to quarter two. Our third agenda item, instructional implications and guidance. Unit four week of October night focuses on classical India part one and part two. Classical China and part one and part two will focus on the following week. In your instructional guide guidance, you have access to the instructional day-to-day -day instruction. We will dive deeper into breaking down those TEKS Align items and those uh, things that you have for the instructional resource. But before that, we do that, let's go into this and take a few minutes to talk about this. If at any time you or you and your team need clarity around an SE or SEs, use the SE breakdown worksheet. This is an opportunity to ensure instruction does what it needs to according to the verb and content students need to know. The bottom portion 
focuses on considering um, previously example items from ACP. You can also use DOL items as well. We will now take a few minutes to kind of go over and review some of the SE breakdowns for the upcoming lesson, Classical India Part 1, with the focus on, ding, 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 the lowest scoring SE from the Fall 2022 ACP, World History 3A. Here, we're going to look at the knowledge and skill statement first. Students understand the contribution and influence of classical civilizations from 500 BC to 600 AD on subsequent civilizations. And then we're gonna go into the student expectation, the TEKS. This TEKS specifically that we are focusing on is describe the major political, religious, philosophical, and cultural influences of India. Notice the rest of the information was removed because this particular lesson is focusing on specifically classical India, not China, not Persia, not Greece. It's focusing on India. The verb is that students should be able to describe. The content they should be able to describe is how politics, religion, philosophies, and culture influenced India. What specific content will students need to know in order to master the standard? They need to know the influence Buddhism had and the fact that it actually started in India and that it really picks up momentum under the Ashoka ruler of the Mauryan Empire. They also need to know that the important cultural and political influences of the Mauryan and Gupta Empire. And with this knowledge and understanding and content of mastery, if students really grasp these ideas, the SE, once again, this is on your participant guide the potential way that this SE can be asked is, which of the following best describes Indian culture during the rule of the Gupta Empire? And the answer would be B. India culture flourished with many works of art and literature being produced. What do they need to know? Well, here, this one specifically focuses on the Gupta Empire. So they need to know about, students need to know about the, um, advancement, the technological advancement, as well as the cultural arts of the Gupta Empire. The skill here is students will analyze information by summarizing key Indian cultures during the Gupta Empire. Some potential misconception is not understanding that these achievements in India, ancient India, actually influenced modern day civilizations and cultures and institutions. Here's another way of spiraling. What content is inferred? Hinduism heavily influenced ancient China and currently still influence present day. I'm sorry, my bad. Not China, ancient India and present day India in many ways, including the social structures, caste system. Now, where in the district can we see this? We have PLC on demands that will break this information down and ex explain the key important information that you need to know. We also have in our IPC focus, you guys have access to the IPC link where you will see a template that looks like this. And what is provided is a list of resources, as well as to the right, suggestions of day-to-day -day instruction and lesson cycles. You have TEKS aligned questions to assess. You also have guiding to consensus questions to create 
checks for understanding in classroom discussions along the way throughout class. And there is also additional resources specific for your students. For example, the Marion and Gupta Empire students can do a perform a court card sort activity to differentiate and categorize each empire. And then just for teacher's purposes, if you need that little cheat sheet along the way, there is also teacher notes available that clarify misconceptions, that also give you uh, central focuses and key points that should be taught when you are ta teaching this lesson for the first time. I know I said I'm a mouthful for you. So I'm gonna actually pause for a second and say, you strongly, I strongly advise you or your partners or your team work together in this upcoming PLC and create the no-show chart for 3A in relation to China. So for the second week in quarter two, the focus is going to be on classical China, Han and Qin dynasty. Also be, a, be a look, on a lookout for the PLC on demand coming up um, early, 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 the beginning of next week. Your success criteria now is I can implement instructional practices and materials that will increase student mastery. 